If you want any of this sweet loot to replace that dog shit from Classic, Hellfire Citadel should be your first stop. Okay, so this is the second of three instance dungeons involving the Hellfire Citadel. Basically, you have these orcs that are experimenting with the blood of a demon. If you have seen the movie 28 Days Later, it sort of has that vibe, but instead of monkey blood, it is the blood of a pit lord. These fuckers are big, too, so they have it subdued in the basement, which later turns into a raid boss. This dungeon is fairly straightforward, but there are a couple notable trash mobs to watch out for, such as the Laughing Skull Enforcer. These are melee-type mobs that can be disarmed or stunned, and they have two skills to watch out for. Shield Slam, which does damage and stuns, and then just a basic strike. And other mobs found at the entrance include this walking shit stain, the Shadow Moon Adept. These mobs are not too bad, although they have a couple skills to watch out for, including a kick, which can interrupt spellcasters, and also a thrash, which is an attack that can build up. Um, so you might want to focus these guys down if you can. Other than that, they're not too bad. The next type of mob you will encounter are the Laughing Skull Rogues. These are stealth characters that hide out near the top of stairs and also by doors. They pack a few skills such as Poison. This is where Poison Cleanse Totem comes in useful. They have Slice and Dice and Kidney Shot. Make sure to keep your tank well healed when facing these. Alright my Shaman Broskis, this is the point where we get to flex some of our signature abilities. I recommend putting a low rank Earth Shock on your bar, as well as having Grounding Totem and Tremor Totem at the ready. Uh, for these super annoying Shadow Moon Summoners, they will of course summon, so you can shock that. Um, they will summon one of two mobs, one being a Fellhound, which will Mana Drain, the other is a Succubus, who will Charm. Uh, grounding Totem and tre Tremor Totem work wonders, as well as Chain Heal here, because... One of the other abilities of this thing is they flame strike and fireball. But other than that, this is the reason why shamans were made for this dungeon. It's time for Just the Tip Johnny! What's up, guys? You may notice that I'm casting my heal early, and that's a great idea. You just start casting your heal early and then sidestep if nobody needs it. This has been Quick Tip Johnny. In the pack that the tank is pulling now is a mob called the Shadow Moon Technician. These are melee mobs that have a couple nasty abilities, including an AOE Silence, they throw Dynamite, and they throw a Proximity Bomb, which does nasty AOE damage. I would recommend starting your Chain Heal early and often with these mobs. They will emote, however, right before they throw a Proximity Bomb. The Laughing Skull Warden is a melee mob that can see stealth, so rogues and stealthies need to watch out. All these things do is Battle Shout, which buffs their nearby allies. The Laughing Skull Legionnaires are also found in this area, and they are melee mobs as well. They do an uppercut, sweeping strikes, and they enrage. In this area, you will also find Shadow Moon Warlocks. They are caster mobs that can buff nearby fell guards if they are out. They do a Curse of Tongues, which will reduce your casting time, a Shadow Bolt, Corruption, and they will fell power nearby summons. <laughs> this first boss is like if Dr. Robotnik had a baby with a bag of meth. He is pretty much a tank and spank, but this meth baby has a couple abilities you need to know about. The first being Domination, which is a mind control ability. This is where Tremor Totem works nice. He also does an exploding beaker. Notable healing items that drop from this boss is a healing one-handed mace and also a male waste item. It's time for Just the Tip Johnny! Alright guys, right after the first boss, uh, there's a pretty nasty pole. Not only is there rogues, but there's a lot of AE bombs, uh, technicians I believe, as well as other mobs. Depending on how the tank pulls, it could be a shit show in a hurry. Um, if you're a shaman, drop your poison cleanse totem and just spam chain heal. Don't even, don't even take your eyes off the party health because it, people can die almost instantaneously. Uh, other healers, just spam everything you got. Make sure you're manned up after that fight, and hopefully the tank lets you get mana after that first boss and doesn't run in there. Uh, they will die, more than likely. Okay, and here's footage of that pole I was just talking about. It can be really nasty. Luckily, this tank was great about giving me time to get mana, drop my totems, and also rebuff him with Earth Shield.
And here our tank is about to do a pull. Uh, he's kind of assessing the situation, which is great. Uh, like I said, we had a really great tank this run. You'll see that there's not only the rogues that I talked about, the fell orc, which we're about to go over, uh, a technician, but there can be other things as well. Uh, here he is about to pull. Now this fell orc that's coming down has a couple of skills. They have a concussion blow, which stuns, and also a stomp with an AoE knockback. Okay, so not long after that first boss, you basically go down a hallway and around a corner, you come to another room. This other room is where the second boss is, uh, Brogok. But you start the encounter by pulling the, the lever in the middle of the room, and then mobs will start pouring out of the rooms. There will be four waves, and they're mixed with elite and non-elite, I believe, if I remember correctly. So if your group has really high damage like mine did, this next boss will be over before you even realize it. But if you have slow DPS, then this bag of blood farts will definitely keep you moving. Um, he has a few abilities to watch out for, including a poison bolt, which is a poison dot and area of effect. And he has poison cloud, which the tank needs to constantly move him out of. He also does a slime spray. Poison Cleanse Totem and Mana Tide Totem will help you here, as this whole encounter is a mana preservation fight, in my opinion. Some of the notable healing loot that this boss will drop is a cloth gloves, cloth wrist, and also a trinket. In this next group coming up, you will find the Fell Guards. They are a huge pain in the ass. They're melee mobs that drop ag pretty often. Uh, so healers, if you want to stand fairly close to your tank, but outside the pummel range, that's probably... One of the easier things to do when facing these. Uh, these fell guards, they have two skills. They do a pummel and an uppercut, which is a knockback. What is this? What have you done? You ruin everything! And here we are. We finally made it, boys and girls. We made it to the last boss. This last boss is a caster mob that the tank needs to face away uh, after he pulls. It's really not too bad as long as you have fairly decent DPS and the DPS know to run away from one of his skills. His skills are Burning Nova, Fire Nova, and Shadow Bolt Volley. With the Fire Nova, he will actually say, Closer, come closer, and burn. That is your key to run away. As long as your DPS does that, this is an easy go. This boss has a couple items of note for healing, including a healing dress, a uh, chest piece thingy, and also healing waist. Hey guys, I would like to thank you for watching until the end. I noticed that uh, over 60% of my watchers are not subscribed. If you want to see more and maybe want to support the channel, please remember to like and subscribe. That will do me numbers. Help spread the word. Help the algorithm do its thing. Anyways, thank you. Here's a little bonus extra I put together for you called Fatinator3000.